Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to my channel. Now let me just give you a quick look at the setup here, what we've got going on. So this, the, the furthest amplifier circuit here, what we got is uh, this circuit here is the first one that I made. And this is the latest one that I've made, it's the same circuit. Uh, the difference being is I've used like BD139s uh, and BD140s over here and I've used the more expensive chips, I can't remember what they are but they're, um, you know, I'll just put them up on the screen I've used this on, I've used all of that on this board even the more expensive output transistors and again the, using the mediocre output transistors on this board there is a slight difference with all the caps, these 100 uh, microfarad are the same, but the 100 nanofarad caps over here, I've used these polyfilm, um, they're reasonably you know, cheap enough. I think they're metallized as well, I can't remember if they're self-healing, but down here I've used the Wema uh, poly caps. And there is a little bit of differences with this. Now it could just be down to the layout. It's, um, sorry, my hand's shaking about there. It could be just down to the layout, I'm not sure. But on the outputs, we've got a one scope here, we've got one scope on here, and we've also got our 100 watt 8 ohm dummy loads. Now the, um, the bias settings on these are around about 50 millivolts each. Uh, well, I'm getting off the collectors, I should say. I'm getting 50 millivolts, so which means it converts to uh, 75 milliamps, give or take, you know, a couple of milliamps either way. And this is, you know, it can be dependent on the on the temperature in the room. But I've checked them again today. It's been warmed up, and uh, yeah. So what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the software and see what that tells us about the outputs of both of these amplifiers. The first one I built comes with this power supply. They're using exactly the same transformers. They're connected in um, to the mains at exactly the same voltage. Uh, so what's coming out of these transformers should be pretty much exactly the same. The difference is on here I've got um, a discrete bridge rectifier here, and quite a chunky one. I can't remember if these are six. Um, I can't remember if these are six or um, ten amp. And over here we've got a thirty-five amp bridge rectifier, and we've also got an X two um, capacitor to you know keep the noise down the line level noise and underneath here i can't show you because it's set up and it's on is that there is also the x2 capacitor underneath there different brands one of these came out of an old power supply which is underneath here and this one's a v-shape uh, not cheap and that's on there we've got different it's a pretty much the same amount of millifarads uh, capacitance but this is broken down into 330, uh, 3,300 microfarads per capacitor, where this is 10 uh, millifarads or 10,000 microfarads, and this is 4.7 uh, millifarads or um, 4,700 microfarads. So there are little tiny differences like that. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to just go over to the screen here and we're going to see what's going on. Now, on the first one, I've set them both to, uh, to both. It's actually down here is 40 watts at the moment. Uh, and this is THD and noise versus the frequency. So I'm just gonna get it running. And what we will see coming out of this is we're gonna go straight up to 40 watts, which is quite a big jump anyway. And you'll see down here on the spectrum analyzer. So the blue, is channel two and channel two is the new board and the red is channel one and channel one is the older board and here you get to see as it's going through the different frequencies what's happening in the background here and the differences and this is just a sinusoidal as you can as you can see there 
And if we look across here, we can see that everything's staying sort of around about uh, minus 75 dB. Or just under, which is quite nice. And we can see here that we got 0.1% distortion. 0. Let's say 0.01% and 0.1%. And that's going across the board um, at 40 watts into 8 ohms. Uh, we can look all the way down this, but just keep this video um, sort of shortish. I'm just going to go through this, and you can look at this yourselves. I'm just going to go for those points of interest, which would be these peaks. And then you can see down on here as well how that relationship is between here and the um, FFT on the spectrum analyzer. So that's pretty good. You can see those numbers there. I mean, I'm looking at the top right now to the 0 0.05555. 5555, yep. Yeah, of the old, let me just check that again, yeah. Of the older version. And the, uh, the newer version is this blue line here. So both exactly the same. And then we've got this little crossover point line where the bluer version doesn't quite do as well as the older version. I'm not quite sure what the, why that is. But we can do that again on just THD. We'll run that again, again at 40 watts, because that's um, yeah, pretty good. Uh, sorry if you can hear a noisy noise now in the background. That's my boiler, it's kicked in. It happens to live here in the same room as me. Why on earth they did that, I really don't know. Again, you can see that the older version in the red is just very slightly above. I mean, we're talking 0 0.03 and 0 0.04 on the percentages here of total harmonic distortion. And it seems quite nice across the, across the frequency. We're going between 20 hertz and 2000 hertz. The nice thing about it is they do stick well below the 1%. That is, that is quite nice there. So let's uh, skip over now. Now things are warmed up a bit. And we're going to do a... Um, we'll do a look at... Well, let's do a frequency response look first. So both channels again. We're going from range of 10 to 50,000 uh, 50, hertz. And I'm going to put the, uh, the level up to... Let's say... Um, well, if, if we, I can probably about uh, 800 millivolts is probably, you know, that's the, one of the highest levels you can put into this. So if I put it at about 6, or we can do 6, 5, um, I think we can do that. No, we'll just put it in there 6. And we'll just run that there. So it's over half volume. We're just going to look at the frequency response. I mean, I very much doubt if you're going to be playing it, unless you've got a real big room, if you wanted to be filling the room or something, if you'd be playing it that loudly. In this quite small room, I mean, it really does. It, it's, it sounds good. I'm not, I'm not going to... Um, I'm not trying to um, hype it up at all, because it does sound really good. Now, looking at the frequency response here, I think the main thing to take into account here is it's pretty much pretty much level, pretty much uh, in line with each other. Doesn't seem to be anything uh, wrong here at all. Um, and the uh, dB relation to the frequency as well. Um, no, it's very good, 27 dB, which is, I think that's what they said the gain was, it's 27 dB. Okay, so that, you know, you can take a peek at and look again yourselves, because it's easy enough just to pause this across here or just watch it again as it's climbing across and now uh, the next one that we're going to do um, is the total harmonic distortion to versus power both channels again this time we're going to go from 10 millivolts uh, 10 milliwatts sorry to 100 watts and we've got it to stop at 1% THD okay I think that's good enough uh, for the test for this at 1% THD. And so let's get that running now. 
and again the old old um, the old circuit is red and the newer one is the blue so as we're coming up here towards the 100 uh, millivolt RMS line the power as you can see is going up in a linear fashion that's this and you can see that over there you can see what the wattage is and you can also see the uh, VRMS input and this is giving the, the, uh, the, the distortion levels including noise as we've seen it's dropped down quite nicely at around about 4 volts uh, 4 watts sorry 5 watts the nice thing about it is everything seems to be pretty even and there is slight difference there but we're talking very very small amount now we're into 15 watts noise levels are reducing and we're at 40 watts now now this is the interesting part for me and we will shut off at 1% distortion. So if we bring that across here to where we shut off is uh, on the blue, which is the new one, it's at 60 watts. And on the red one, it's actually at 63 watts. Now for, that, for me, that's, that's pretty interesting. And on the blue, when we start going up real quick there, uh, it's at 44. Um, we're just going to say 44 watts and on the oldest circuit remember this is the oldest circuit it's up 47 watts hmm it's not what I expected and I am going to be sort of like rattling my head a little bit trying to figure out why this could be I may end up swapping over just just for you know the, um, the power supplies I may feed the, the two different circuits, I just alternate the power supplies just to see if it makes any difference. I'm not going to do it in this video because we're going to round this up in a second. Um, but I am a little bit surprised, like I've sort of shown you, there's only a few real differences in this and the circuit layout is only very slightly different where maybe we could think that uh, the capacitors here are closer to the power rail on the side, uh, sorry, closer to the power rail uh, over here. Let me just go in one, oh, back out a bit, a bit, bit closer on both sides of the power rail. But uh, I don't get it, you know, these uh, little BD139s mm -hmm. and 140s, even though it does say in the write up that these, the, you know, you're not really going to find a lot of difference in this. Uh, I thought there might be just a little bit more. I thought maybe this one would pull off the job a bit better. It's got um, thicker connections, good copper cabling where this is the, you know, on this side it's the, I mean it's good cabling obviously with the crappier cabling. It's not as good as the, the good copper over here. Um, mm, I'm a bit confused. But it is only marginal and there could be other things that we can do but there are other things I can do playing around with this I can take these because I put the sockets in for these output transistors and I can put some tip 35 C tip 36 C's in there and just see how they do because that's for another video but, hey, there you go so there's the comparison everything uh, on the setup here you know I'm using the one um, waveform generator and just splitting it so that's exactly the same as what you're going to be getting um, there's going to be no difference there the, every, everything is set up to be exactly the same and the software uh, deals with the outputs coming in and you know it's uh, yeah huh. well it's been fun for me so uh, I hope you've enjoyed that and um, I'll catch you in the next one we'll get another amp circuit and we'll play around with that and see what that does okay guys just an additional piece here what I want to say is um, playing around with this for hours and hours now after making this video I can see that there are some things where things change around 
it doesn't all seem to be um, what you might think it is because when you watch this and you see what actually goes on what you can see is that there are different variations to this um, what I think I've figured out is a lot of it is temperature dependent and what I mean by that is it's temperature dependent on the well possibly on the um, quiescent current but definitely down to the dummy loads as well these are only 100 watt dummy loads when I'm trying to shove quite a bit of power through there and I do it on one and not the other what seems to happen is that um, you get this variation going on so if one of them is hotter than the other there's more of a variation going on and that's got to be kept in mind that's it that's all I wanted to say um, I'll catch you in the next one guys thanks very much for watching this if you got this far thank you